We are starting for the first time national service in Jamaica. We feel the great need is in education. They were going to call for the young people to give us a period of time when they get back into the primary system to teach before they move on out into their careers. Once a child reaches 16 or 17, if they say fail their O-level exam, we will then ask them to give two years, to volunteer for two years, to come in and teach in the primary schools while we look after them, which will also give them a chance to try again for their exam, in which case they might then be able to take advantage of it to move on further again. If the child passes the O level and wants to move on to A level or some kind of technical training, the child will go, but we will ask it to carry the obligation of service. And if it goes right to the end of the university system, so be it. But even at that time, we're going to say, come and teach certain subjects in the technical schools, come and teach subjects even for two years in the primary schools, create a revolution in the knowledge of the people by putting our skills that we've got through our secondary system cycled back into the training of more skills so as to bring the light of knowledge and freedom to the people that are being born and growing up in the system. I think it's the most exciting challenge and opportunity for Jamaica since independence. It's something to stir the, the, the fire of nationalism and patriotism in your heart, Mr. Speaker. The National Service, they'll be asked to give two years, mainly in teaching, but also if people prefer, perhaps, with the literacy program, they can help with the youth development program, with the youth camps that are coming on stream later this year, the new type of youth development, there are all sorts of ways in which they can help put back into their country so that instead of drowning through the lack of resources to create training, we use our own resources that say, let me give back something to the country that gave me both birth and the life opportunity of higher education. Because of all this planning, sir, I'm very pleased to be able to announce something more about education. At the present time, about 2,500 children in each age group move through into the secondary system and then some into the comprehensive, the technicals, etc. Because of plans already laid, already 9,000 of those children will be able by next year, September, to move into expanded technical schools and expanded secondary schools. That still leaves another 10,000 of junior secondaries with nowhere to go right now. Because of the call for the volunteers and the getting of the secondary schools to give back the training in the system, we are going to be able to revolutionize the quality of the primary education because as a well-educated youngster that is going in, we're going to be able to release the best teachers to move up the system and strengthen the system inside the junior secondary. And by the introduction of the ship system next year, among the 19,000 junior secondaries, nine of whom will go on into secondary, but 10 of whom will remain, we will be able to give two years further training and lift the age of the junior secondary schools from 15 to the age of 17. What we're going to do with the 10,000 is to create training in the junior secondaries that is particularly orientated to the needs of the economy. Therefore, that two years of extra training in the junior secondary for the other 10,000 will have a heavy vocational bias, strong on work attitudes, concepts of work discipline, and the creation of skills that will be particularly identified by industry as the things of which they are short. We want to see this country can take one thing and lift it out of the quagmire of politics and let it be us like a beacon summoning the nation. 
to the solution of its own problems through self-reliance. I come back now, Mr. Speaker, to where I began, which was the problem of an age group marching forward. You have, say, 50,000 children of 15, all with their anxious parents behind them. Of the 50,000 children roughly of that age next year, instead of 9,000 with a hope and 41 to face a blank wall, at one stroke we will have lifted it to 28,000 children who will be receiving further training of one sort or another. More than three times in one stroke. And the key is national service. The putting back to your nation of what you gain from the privilege of education. When we talk of taxes, I say to the people, I know it is hard. And you know, it reminds me, I hear all the jokes and fine, you know, the better the bitter. And that's all what makes life worth living. But let me remind everybody so that, you know, it's a very funny thing about life, Mr. Speaker. Many a man has died of an illness because there was not a doctor to prescribe one dose of medicine. And many a man lives in the world today, Mr. Speaker, because there was a doctor that had the courage to say, draw one draft of the medicine, it will taste bad, it will be bitter, but it is the thing that will release you to the better that must come. And therefore, I say, I know the taxes are hard. But I say to a person, when you're thinking of your bet, and I hope you win it, wherever you are, whoever you are, think that that is helping to start the revolution again in education, to lift it yet again from where the torch bearers of the past have brought it up to now. If you're drawing on a, on a cigarette, think that it is helping that either it was going to stay down, or the condensed milk go up, or we couldn't start this great new initiative in education, we couldn't give the chance, we couldn't let the mothers see the whole light of hope dawn for the children of the next generation. Something had to pay. And rather than creep along like before, we said, let us be bold now. Let us be brave now. Let us take time and destiny by the forelock now so that we can set tomorrow's generation free. When a person buying a car, sure it had 76% tax before, so now it has 25% more. It's not because they don't want people to have cars, but something has to pay. And maybe somebody buying a $4,000 car, which already has 75% tax on it, maybe, or something around there, and it's another 25%, not as much as was there before. Let them think that maybe that money will be supplying perhaps two jobs for two people that have never had a job in their lives. And ask yourself, do you love your country enough for that to be worthwhile? And I say, sir, we talk of change, What is change? Change, sir, is the willingness to look at your system and have the courage to know what is wrong. More is not change. Change is to reorder the values of your life. Change is to have a vision of a new hope for a society. Change is to have the courage to invest something now in sacrifice so that tomorrow's people may be free. Change is a matter of a vision of justice. And you talk of change, was there change? Let us speak of change. Labor Day was change as people began to feel self-reliance. The people's food complex that is coming is change because it will bring relief, that is change. Operation Grow is change. The leasehold system is there for change. The integrity legislation is change. The literacy program is change. The recognition of women's rights is change. The 40-hour work week for government workers is change. The workers' bank that is coming is change. 
The creation of equal status for all children in Jamaica is changed. The law to prevent non-Jamaicans owning our land is changed. The 18 year old vote is changed. Free education for the people is changed. National service, national service where we put back is change. These are the means by which, sir, we shall achieve power for the people and freedom in our time. These are the means. These are the means by which, sir, the power will come to the people. Sacrifice now for a great day tomorrow where we will march together in the name of work, in the name of justice, because the word is love. Thank <laughs> you.